So you know what surprised me the most about the September event? No, it wasn't the Apple Watch and the lack of flat edges. It was actually the A15 and the fact Apple did not compare the A15 with the A14. Since if you've seen a few Apple events in the past, you know that they always flex the raw performance of the new processor and compare it to the last version. But this year they just said, hey, the A15 is 50% faster than the competition, which they don't actually name. So who is the competition? What are they comparing to? We don't know, and these stats are pretty pointless, and it's led a lot of us to believe that maybe the A15 is a rebranded version of the A14, like Apple does, with some versions of the S chips in the Apple Watch. Well guys, I'm glad to report, that is not the case, it's far from it. The A15 is a pretty decent jump over the A14, and so let's delve into these benchmarks that have been spotted on Geekbench. But first, make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors, and with that being said, let's just talk in. Right, so delving into the CPU performance, we have two listings, one for the regular 13 and one for the 13 Pro. And well, the scores are this, the regular 13 had a single core score of 1724 and a multi core score of 4587. And then the Pro scored 1738 and 4766. So, yes, as expected, the scores are very similar across the board. I'm assuming the extra RAM with the Pro could be giving it a slightly better result, but on the whole, performance is pretty much identical. Now, as for how this compares with the A14, we're going to see a 10% increase with the single core and an 18% increase with the multi-core, so pretty decent and ultimately minor improvements, but either way, those improvements are appreciated. Now yes, I know comparing this to the A14 does not sound very impressive, but if you compare it to other chips, you can start to understand why this is actually pretty impressive. For example, the A15 single core score outperforms the M1 in the MacBooks and iPad Pro. That is pretty insane and considering the M2 is going to be based on the A15 chip, we can expect the M2 to be a lot better than the already amazing M1 chip. And as for the multi-core, this iPhone chip now beats the A12X and the A12Z we saw in previous versions of the iPad Pro, so that is pretty impressive, and it's kinda crazy that the iPad Mini 6 is now faster than a 2020 iPad Pro. And talking about the iPad Mini 6, do remember that these scores are gonna be even higher on the iPad because it has a lot more room to dissipate heat, and so yes, the iPad Mini 6 is an absolute beast for its size and price. But guys, when it comes to the GPU, the A15 is a massive leap forward over the A14 because with the 5-core GPU in the iPhone 13 Pro series and the iPad Mini 6, you get a metal score of 14,216. That's 55% faster than the outgoing 12 Pro, which scored 9,123. So yes, that is a massive jump, and I'm surprised Apple did not flex on stage, since that is very much flex-worthy. Anyways, I'm very happy about these upgrades, and it does make sense because the GPU is going to be very important, for the ProMotion display and the new camera features on the iPhone 13 Pro series. And by the way, in case you're wondering how this compares to the M1, well, the M1 is a lot better as expected. It scores 21,168, which is a massive jump over the A15. But guys, it's not all great news because the regular iPhone 13s with their 4-core GPU scores 10,608, which is only 15% faster than the previous iPhone 12. And so yes, the GPU upgrades aren't as massive on the regular iPhone 13 models, though I guess it's not the worst news in the world since it is still an improvement over the already excellent A14. Now one final tidbit, the A15 in the iPad mini 6 is clocked at 2.9 GHz compared to 3.2 GHz on the iPhone 13 models, we have no idea why it's been downclocked on the iPad mini because, if anything, the iPad needs more power than the iPhone, but anyways, the good news is, there's a very small impact on performance, 
And of course, like I said, the iPad mini should be able to sustain higher workloads for longer because it can dissipate the heat with its bigger size. Anyways, that's pretty much it, but tell me in the comments below, are you gonna buy the iPad mini 6 or one of the iPhone 13 models? Anyways, thank you for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the video in the icon above on details regarding the new AirPods. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya peeps.